All right, everybody. I'm going to work out the review assignment for those of you who are not in class or uh, if you needed extra help. Um, so I want you to put a comment at the top with your name. And then I ask you to ask the user for their name and print how long their name is. So um, you could do things like this, say part one, or just say, you know, comment and one. And name equals input. Please enter your name. I'm going to click that so it's easier to see. And then you can say print. Your name has this many letters. And then you do L-E-N, that's length, name. Let's run it, make sure it works. All right, so far so good. I'd recommend running it regularly. Part two, store the word tiger in a variable, then print the G from the variable using slicing. So um, I'm gonna use T for like temp equals tiger. That's storing tiger in a variable. And then I wanna remind you uh, the way these things work, uh, there's this thing called slicing. So character two, oh, I didn't number it right. There we go. Character two, they, they start at zero. The T is character zero. The I is character one. The G is character two. So if I wanted to print just the G, um, we do T square bracket two. So let's make sure that works. And name his, and it prints a G. That's all we had to do. Number three, remember you can pause this video. Ask the user to enter an integer, then print out the product of 10 times the integer. So uh, n for number equals int input. Please enter an integer. And we're going to print n times 10. So part of why I'm doing this is if you didn't have the int on here, and then you tried to do n times 10, you would get whatever whatever number they entered 10 times. Like if they entered 45, it would be 45, 45, 45, 45, instead of 450. But this, this is what I want. I want to see a number with a zero at the end. Part four, write code to ask the user for an amount of money in decimal form that's less than 20. Print out their change if you subtract the number they entered from 20. So to do this, um, yeah, sadly, I realize we haven't done this part yet. So I'm taking that number off. So um, ignore all that stuff I just said. Part four for you, because the assignment, I just changed it, is write a while loop that asks the user to enter a number, reports if the guess is too low or too high, and makes them keep guessing until they guess 13. All right. So. We're going to say while true um, n equals int input, please guess my number, my secret number. All right. And if n equal equal 13, print. Nice, you got it. And then do a break. And then you say L if n less than 13, print too low. Please try again. And then notice I'm backspacing after the prints. And then we do an else, print too high. Please try again. So look at how this works. We got a while true that that indents everything. And then in the if statement, each part of the if, the if, the elif, and the else, there what follows those parts is also indented. And that's important. So let's run this, make sure everything's working. Please enter your name, Hayes. Then we got the G. Please enter an integer. Three. Three times ten is thirty. Please guess my secret number. Three, too low, forty-four, too high, thirteen. Nice, you got it. Okay, we're just chugging along here. Uh, number five, create a variable called n that contains this is part six, then print the variable uppercase using the upper method. n equals this is part six, 
print n dot upper. And notice I have the parentheses after the word upper. That's important. Six, create a list that contains no items. Uh, then add two items to it using the append method and print it. Sort it and print it a second time. Uh, I'm going to make a list of things I don't like equals empty square brackets. That's how you create an empty list. And then to add something to it, um, um, you use the append command. All right. And, uh, and then I wanted you to print the list. You just print it. And then I wanted you to sort it. To sort it, you do a line all by itself with the name of the list and then dot sort. And then I wanted you to print it again. So let's run this again. Hey, uh, enter an integer. 4 times 10 is 40. Please guess my secret number. I'm going to go ahead and say 13. This is part 6. Smoke, fire season, fire season, smoke. There you go. Um, Okie dokie, number 7. Create a variable that contains whatever. Then use slicing to print 8. I'm going to go t equals whatever. And then look what I'm going to do. Another, I'm going to do what I did before, a comment here and go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we want 8, which is a t e. So print t square bracket. Now we start at 2, and um, we go to 1 more than we actually want. So we're going to say 2 to 5, and that should uh, it should give us characters 2, 3, and 4. So let's make sure. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yep, we got eight. That's called slicing. Number eight. Copy this line and paste it into your program. All right. I'm going to copy it. I've got another window open that you can't see. I'm going to paste it into my program. I've got some beautiful geraniums in my garden. Geraniums are flowers, by the way. And then... Uh, write an expression that prints go tigers using slicing and uh i'll show you i'm copying uh that other thing out of the document which uh just will make it easier um and the zero yeah this starts over at like 11. that's that's 10 and then that's 11. yeah so the Oh, and so, yeah, okay, so it's all lined up. Uh, although, uh, not quite all lined up. <laughs> yeah, there it's all lined up. Yeah, it's just... Okay, so, oh, this has got to be a comment, otherwise the program won't run. Um... Okay, so now I want to print go tigers. So look, we've got G-O is right here. Um, although um, I'm asking that the G be capitalized. So uh, why don't we just print, and we're gonna say B square bracket. We want to get character five. We want to make it uppercase uh, dot upper. That gives us a capital G. And then we do a plus and we want an O uh, so we might as well do B square bracket six. That's the O. And then we need a space. A space you can just do with a comma, you know, between words. That'll put a space in when we're printing. And then we need a capital T for tigers. Uh, I found we got T. Uh, well, it's just two characters, seven. That'll be fine. B square bracket seven. That's the T. And we're going to do dot upper. Uh, no star. That's uh, the T capital, and then we want I G E R S. I I don't see an I. 
followed by a GERS, but there's a GER in geraniums, which is awesome. So I knew I'd done something to be helpful. Let's do an I. Character 19 is an I. Okay, and then we're going to do GER. That's characters 24 through 26. But remember, you got to go one more than you really want. 24 colon 27 should go GER. And then we want an S. I see an S at character 32. And then we need exclamation point, and that's at uh, character 46, B46. So, you know, there might be an error here, but uh, I'm going to test it. Uh, go Tigers. Boom. Um, all right, and we got three more to do. We're almost done. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Problem number nine, write a while loop that prints the numbers one through six and which prints whether each number is odd or even. Ooh, that's a lot. X equals one, while X less than seven, print X. Uh, so that'll print the numbers one through six. Oh, actually that'll print the number one forever. So we're gonna say X equals X plus one. Uh, that, that adds one to X each time through. Um, but I asked you to say whether the numbers, numbers were odd or even. So we're gonna check that. if x modulo 2 equal equal 1. What that says is, hey, if you divide x by 2 and you have a remainder of 1, that means it's an odd number, right? Because if you divide 3 by 2, it goes in once uh, and then there's 1 left over. Um, so you can do this if x modulo 2 equal equal 1, print x is odd, and then um, you do an else. you got a backspace to get the else back to the same level as the... Uh, uh, as the if, and then I'm copying that. And if it's not odd, it's even, because a number is either odd or even. There's not um, three types of numbers. And then we still have this x equals x plus one. So let's, um, uh, I'm sorry, we have to keep entering all these things, but you can get used to um, making it happen. Yeah, all right, so now number 10. Uh, n equals int input, please enter a number. Uh, and then I said use an if, elif, else structure to print if the number is positive, negative, or zero. So if n greater than zero, that means it's positive. Uh, n is positive. I'm going to copy this. Undo, uh, and then backspace here, say L if n less than zero. And we can, oh, uh, huh. I thought I copied this, but it must have undone. Uh, if it's less than zero, it's negative. And this, uh, a number does have three states here. Here we need to say else, that's like the catch-all, print, uh, I'm just going to say n is 0. I mean, pretty obviously, because it's going to say 0 is 0. All right. And then lastly, we'll go to number 11. Number 11, the last problem. At the end of all of the above, ask, ask the user if they want to run again. Make it so that no, 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 and no all work. Okay, so... Now, the run again thing only works if you're in a loop. So check it out. We're not in a loop. So what that means is we're going to have to make a loop at the very top. We'll say while true. And then we're going to select the whole program. And if you just hit tab, everything's indented. So now all that stuff is in the loop, this top loop. And so now down here at 11, we can say r equals input run again. Uh, yes. No, uh, I like to say what you're supposed to be saying. And, uh, and then right here, you can say if r dot upper equal equals no. So what this is doing is taking whatever they entered, it's making it uppercase. And that way we only have to check one thing. You can say uh, uh, break and that's it. And uh, otherwise, yeah, it would run again because if you're in or anything else. So let's uh, let's run it. Uh, 
All uh, right, enter an integer and guess the secret number, 1, 44, 13. Nice, you got part six. The lists, eight, go tigers, odd, even. Please enter a number. I'm gonna go negative nine. It's negative, run again. And I'm gonna say small n, capital O, and it should, it should quit. Yeah, there we go. So I did the whole assignment in 15 minutes and 20 seconds, and that was with about 20 seconds of thinking about a problem that I decided to remove from it. But anyway, here we go. 